Thank you so much for joining me in today's episode. As you've already seen, I recently bought a dirty old Bridgeport mill. Right now, it's a little bit disassembled. I had to take off the bed, which is over there, in order to get through the door, which wasn't big enough. If you're into watching dirty old machines get cleaned and get some much needed love, this is definitely gonna be the video for you. I've put on some more clothes, I'm ready to get dirty, and there's nothing left to do but get started, I guess. Luckily, I think it hasn't been used that much over the last years. The guy I bought it from had had it since 91 and had barely ever used it. Although he thought that all the oil ports were grease ports, so now the machine is entirely filled with grease and old crap. I think it's not that bad once we get all the grease and grime and old fun off of the paint. I think there is a machine in very good condition underneath. Let's just get started by shoveling out that crap in there. Oh, just look at this. Look at that. That's just one big blob of grease. Ugh. This is definitely starting to look much, much better. Inside here, I sprayed everything down with a good bunch of soapy water. I have no idea how so much stuff managed to get in here because this is all covered when the machine is assembled. But doesn't matter, it's out of there now. And just look at this pile. This is the third pile of this size. We just fat and grease and old oil and chips. Things are starting to look a little bit better. I've got quite a lot of the parts from the mill on the table here. The next step is to deal with this super nasty cross light here. And you can see that there's just a ton of old grease chips that have stuck to that grease, all sorts of nastiness. And the main problem with this is that these are oil ports. So oil is meant to go in there, goes through some internal holes, and then it's meant to come out right here. But as you can see, this is full of old yucky grease. You see, when it comes to these ports here, they're meant for oil, they're meant to lubricate the ways. So these surfaces are meant to slide on top of another metal surface with a little film of oil in between so that they slide smoothly and so that they don't wear out the metal parts. Now on these old Bridgeport mills, these fittings here where you're meant to put oil in are the same fittings that you would normally find on equipment that needs grease. So a lot of people end up, unfortunately, filling these with grease, everything gets sticky, everything gets nasty, these ports clog up, and then all of this starts wearing out super quickly. It looks like the wear isn't that bad, but we need some way of getting the grease out of this holes, and for that I've got a little trick. I'm taking just a normal grease gun. Although these are meant for grease, you can 
fill these up with degreaser. Put that thingy back on. Put that on the fitting and that gunk is coming out of that hole. There we go. Look at that. Yucky. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do to get all that lovely grease out of there. I'm gonna clean the whole thing up and then move on to clean more stuff. This guy is definitely as clean as it will get in my ownership. All the channels where there used to be grease are completely clean and ready to receive new oil once we assemble it. Normally, these things go on right about here and hold these now pretty gross looking leather things here. And these leather things are wipers that will wipe and keep small metal bits and pieces from getting in underneath here and wearing out these metal surfaces. But since these are worn, I'm gonna use this nice piece of leather right here and cut out a couple of new ones, punch a hole in them, and then we can install everything back together and have that ready to be assembled again. Look at that. Doo -doo -doo. So these two will then fit into that little guy right here and here and this tiny little bit of leather right here will prevent chips from getting onto this surface. So that should be really nice. Sun is shining and I am still cleaning parts. Both the lead screws are clean. They look in great condition as well as these nuts inside of this little guy right here, which connects to both the X and Y axis lead screws. And the very last bit that I still need to clean is this massive dirty that will go here. And once that guy is clean, we can finally start assembling all the bits and pieces back together. Because I realized you guys have not yet seen how this thing looks assembled, so that will be exciting. I'm super stoked on that. And then try to get that super heavy thing onto this table so I can clean it and then... So in order to get this old crusty stuff off the flat surfaces here, I've come up with a way that works pretty well. I've just taken an old like sander and put on one of these Scotch-Brite pads, WD-40. That will get rid of all the gross stuff and leave me with a really nice and shiny surface. to go all of these big parts are as clean as I'm gonna get them there's still a few little scars of previous owners little mishaps in them it's finally time to start assembling these pieces and to help me out a little bit I found an old manual online printed out some assembly instructions or like part numbers 
because some of these parts I took apart weeks ago, so now I'm gonna have a good time figuring out how everything goes back together. Don't take this as an assembly instruction. I have no idea what I'm doing. This is the first time I've ever taken apart one of these mills. Here goes nothing, let's get started assembling. Okay, so first things first, this guy goes on. That's basically like half a mil. <laughs> I've made sure to apply plenty of oil on all the surfaces that I assemble now so that I don't accidentally start scratching up all the pieces before everything is assembled. So with this thing now in place, it's still very loose and that is because normally machine tools like this have an adjustability in the form of this wedge thingy, which is called a gib, and that goes in here somewhere. Or should. And that guy is tightened down by this screw. And the next bit to go in is this weird guy with a bunch of nuts in. And no, this one also does not need grease, still oil. And I think we go in there with a little twisty twist. Uh, ta -da! And then lead screw goes in there. Time to try and get this super heavy piece of steel back onto the machine by myself. Luckily, both my work table and my tool cart are the same height, so I should be able to just button right on. And now, thankfully for a lot of great suggestions on the internet, there's a really easy way to get this thing onto there, and that is to just lower the table of the mill to the right height, we should be able to just Ooh. Okay, so obviously it's super loose. We still need to put the gib in there and tighten that up and put the lead screw and then and then yeah. Yay, the table is installed and everything seems to work really well. Everything is super tight and feels really nice. It is, however, quite tedious to have to turn this thing all the way from one side to the other. Luckily, this machine came with a power feed, which is this dirty lump of metal and electronics that is currently on the floor in a very sad state right here. This one goes onto the side of the table right there. I'm gonna give this thing a good cleaning and then we'll install it and see if it works. So behind me we do now have a basically fully assembled Bridgeport mill, all the stuff is cleaned, all the mechanical parts are actually back and put together. So there's just one more piece that I need to install back on the machine and that is the digital readout, the DRO. This box right here that is when it's turned on will be able to tell me the position of the cutter head relative to the table. And it works in a way that it has these two sensors connected via a cable to this box and these sensors run inside of these aluminum extrusions. And inside of these aluminum extrusions, there's a glass sheet with some printed stuff on it. And that printed stuff is registered by some fancy electronics and a mirror and some sensors inside of these guys right here. So when these slide inside of here, it knows where in the length of this it is. This thing is original to the machine, so it's also super old. I just wanna clean it and hopefully put it back together and have it function. You don't really want to get any dirt in here and over the years of the use, it hasn't really been treated that nicely, so there's a layer of old grime and gunk on the scales that I can see already. I'm gonna try my best to clean that out. And you can also see that these are meant to have this little rubber protection lip on the inside to make sure that no dirt gets 
inside from underneath. This has clearly failed to do its job over the years and it's pretty close to just falling apart. So I'm gonna see if I can find a solution to fix that as well. That was truly nerve wracking. I really didn't want to damage any of this super delicate glass stuff in here. But eventually I think I managed to rescue these pretty well. On the inside, however, I didn't want to put something in there and then move that dirt around on top of that glass and then scratch up the glass surface. So I just put the whole thing under the sink, ran some hot water under it, and that seemed to flush out the particles pretty well because nothing actually was stuck to it. It was just on top of the glass. I went to the store and got some cotton and some Q-tips and made sure to clean out everything super well. And if you look inside of here now, you can really see that everything is super clean. And now that these are nice and clean, we could start assembling all this back together. However, since you took out these nasty old rubber strips, right now we don't have anything to protect chips from coming in from the underside. And after a little bit of searching online, it turns out that getting the original sealant strips for these probably 50 year old West German made glass scales is kind of hard. And if you can find them, they're super expensive. So what do a full bag of window squeegee thingies have in common with an old German DRO? Turns out that it just so happens that the sealing strip from the window squeegees fits perfectly inside of that groove right here. So I'm just gonna use a couple of these, trim them to length and then put them in and hopefully that will do a good job of sealing everything. So I managed to get these rubber thingies in here and I think that actually will work out pretty well. So I'm gonna do my best with sliding in the sensor carefully and then installing everything and tightening everything down and then hopefully doing that without damaging anything. Okay, moment of truth. Oh boy, I hope this is gonna work. Let's connect the two sensors. This is gonna be the X axis. X, Y axis, power. Mm. Okay, so far so good. Both axes are zero. I don't know if I've done the job right. This should start counting in either direction if I smooth the table. why that just jumped to 25. I don't get it. So the x-axis here seems to work without any major problems. It counts both directions. I can move it a whole bunch without any weird stuff. But the y-axis gets to a certain point and then stops working. Huh. Okay, so I'm gonna spend a little bit of time trying to figure out What's wrong here? Hopefully it's something silly and I can fix it. I really hope it's that. Oh boy, let me tell you, that was... So I spent about the last two hours adjusting this thing, cleaning it. After a little while, suddenly the glitch with it stopping counting disappeared, but then it was still counting totally wrong for a long time. At first I thought that this thing was installed crooked, which it definitely was, so I used an indicator and got it all squared up, lined up, perfectly aligned, but then it still didn't work. You know, like, okay, what do I do now? I took the whole thing apart, tried to clean it, put it back together, still didn't work. Took it apart again, even more. Now I'm like in bits and pieces with this little super tiny glass thing with tiny slots in it. Eventually, just worked. I don't know how or why or I don't know. But now it works. Look. Zero. Ba, 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 and it counts normally. 
and I checked it with moving the bed all the way to one side and then all the way back and it still reads the same measurement even if I repeat that a couple of times. And the same thing here as well. I can move the bed all the way to one side and then all the way to the other side again and it will still read the same measurement. But of course, moving this thing back and forth with this long bed gets really tedious after a while. So I got myself a power cable from the other side over there. And now we've got this. And it even has a rapid. Super cool. <laughs> and because for some reason everything on the machine works now, I figured I'd spend a little bit of time with some management of the wires here to make everything look all nice and tidy. And man, I've got to tell you, I am super happy that this is finally done. I've spent the last five days cleaning old grease and dirt and just nasty stuff off of this machine that probably hasn't been cleaned. At least the owner said he hasn't been cleaned much the last 40 years. And that was definitely noticeable. But now everything works. I would like to spend a little bit more time taking apart this at some point. I probably will in the future, but definitely not in this video because I want to get back to making stuff. I've got a ton of new cool projects planned, some of which involve this machine. So if you want to see me make more things, not only clean old dirty machines, make sure to subscribe. And I think we're going to end this video by actually making some chips. Would be a shame if we didn't, right? So again, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Make sure to subscribe if you want to do that. You can support me on Patreon. There's a link down below. And let's make some chips. Thank you so much for watching this episode. All right, let's try this. Piece of aluminum, right in there. Okay, first time I ever put a cutter in the machine. Don't be silly, use some glasses. Turn on the spindle. A nice slow feed rate. The feed sideways. Feed nice and slow. Definitely don't take this video as any sort of how to on how to machine. Wrong way, of course. <laughs> We're making chips! That's it. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to continue doing this. See you in the next video.